Hello everyone and welcome back to another Godot Community Spotlight video. If you're new here, welcome. Each week I try to shine a light on people doing things and explaining how to do things in the Godot engine and hopefully play my small part in growing the Godot community. Recently Godot 4 has been trending upwards on Google search and looking around YouTube for new and interesting videos has proved to be very fruitful. Here are just a few of the videos I found this week. Game, game Dev, dev journey. journey Wannabe Game Dev Manisha took part in an interesting challenge. She made a game with Space Nomad without communicating. Just to make things even more difficult, they made the game in Godot, which Manisha had never used before. Basically, they snowballed the game back and forth between themselves. Once a section was finished, it would be passed over to the next dev, and they couldn't make any changes. Watch the full video and hear her thoughts about Godot. She was definitely inspired. Martin Sengis is back and he's updated his save file system from Godot 3.x for Godot 4. He's made the source code and example project available on itch.io. For those of you who want to know more, this file system works using Godot's property system. You only need to define your game variable once and the save files are binary which makes them much smaller in size. The biggest advantage is the thumbnail, so it links a screenshot of your progress to the save file so you can easily see where you left off and which save file you want to load. Please make sure that you visit Martin's channel. He has so much great Godot content you don't want to miss it. Sleepy Code Cat has an awesome video out explaining how to make isometric pixel art world maps in Godot. This is part of his devlog series for his game, Professor Bubbles. I cannot recommend this tutorial enough. It's so well paced and put together, and Sleepy Code Cat has such a calm and clear way of explaining concepts. The game itself, Professor Bubbles, also looks amazing. I love the art style and the color palette choice. I highly encourage you to visit Sleepy Cat's channel and watch more of the devlogs because they're awesome. Kat Cook is an artist who's developing a narrative-driven 2D point-and-click artistic minigame in the Godot engine called Grandma's House. In this video, I was really struck because it's a fresh approach to devlogs. There's an engaging vlog style and it's really interesting to hear the approach from an artist to tackling the problem of game design and development. It's good to hear about how much effort will go into each of the roles that a solo developer will need to fill when making the game. So please do go and watch the full video on Kat's channel. It's really worth it, you will get a new perspective. Finally, Botrix has a video out for all those wanting to dive into Godot for the first time. You can follow his code along and make yourself a simple 2D platformer in just 10 minutes. If you look deeper into Bo's channel, however, you'll find a wealth of videos, not just on developing games with Godot, but on being a game developer in general. How to stay motivated, how to finish a game, overcoming your fears, and plenty of tips for those making their first game. Please head over to Botrix's channel and show your support for someone who, like myself, is trying to grow the Godot community. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you all again next time. Thank you.